Okay, hello, this is a screencast of some um, XML database software. And I'm going to talk a bit more in detail about XML database software in Friday's lecture next week. But I'm making this video for Wednesday's lecture for the simple reason that what I would like to do is to get you to think about uh, how XML files are organised and how the data might be stored within them. And I quite like the visualization tools that are available in this base X database, um, which I believe might be pronounced base 10. I'm not sure. Um, it's an open source project and you can get it online. I'll put a link to it in the blackboard. But just to get you started, what I've done is I've opened a database file, which is an XML file because it's an XML database. And in that database file, what we've got is a play. It's a well-known play. Uh, the text has been marked up by someone called John Bosak uh, quite a while ago. Uh, it's freely distributable and it's a play called Romeo and Juliet. Hopefully some of you might have heard of this at some point. Um, the play's got all of the things that you'd expect to have in a play. So it's got persona, it's got a title, uh, you've got information about each persona within the play and then it goes on and on and on and on and on and there's speeches between Capulets and Paris and Romeo and Juliet and all of the people that you would expect to see in the play Romeo and Juliet because it is indeed the whole text of the play. So uh, why am I showing you this now? Well first up um, having the play in XML lets you do all sorts of cool stuff so we can begin to look at maybe exploring it so we could have some x query so if we have dollar s in speech return dollar uh, s speaker that should get us the names of except I'm gonna need a dollar not a pound there da, 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 dollar s there we go this should get us a list of all of the speakers in the play in the order in which they speak and that's just doing a straightforward flower expression, um, except it's just got the F and the R rather than the whole F L W O R flower expression. Um, the other things we can do is we can use XPath to search specifically within it. So if we wanted to get um, all of the speakers who who are in a particular part of the play, we can do that by just saying right, we're going to look at a particular part of the play preferably spelling scene right, um, and that gives us uh, information about who speaks when and stuff like that. And we, we're going to look at some more queries about this later on, but what I want you to know is that this is just a, a showing you the data structure, but it's also showing you the tool to a certain extent. So these are all the speakers who speak in Act 3, Scene 1, Busy Scene. Okay, so that's the X query, but that's actually not what I wanted to show you. If we look at the XML, uh, that's the results window. Um, da, 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 what do I want? I want to look at some of the visualizations. So we'll close that window. Um, how do we close a window? We'll just make that window really small. Isn't this going well? So here's a kind of box-based representation of the XML file. And you can see that the top item is a play, the top node is a play. And then you've got some nodes which have a little bit of data, the title. FM, which is information about the actual XML file. You've got the persona, you've got scene descriptions, so and then you've got each act. So act one, scene one, it's got speeches, and inside speeches you've got speech speakers, and they've got lines. Um, and that looks reasonably clear as a sort of, you can quite easily now visualize using this yeah, which is the longest act? Well, it's probably that one, isn't it? That's probably the longest act. What act is that? Um, the other visualizations we can look at are a tree-based visualization. And the tree-based visualization is also really useful. So you can see how it breaks down. So the frontis stuff, the stuff that comes at the beginning of the play, the title, the information about who encoded the XML, the information about the persona, scene description, play subtext, um, does not have as much bulk as the rest of the play, obviously. But you can see here we've got an act, and underneath each act is a scene, and underneath each scene you've got speeches, 
and maybe stage directions and then each speech has underneath that a whole load of lines and speakers information and then at the bottom you've got some text nodes but it lets you feel get a real feel for the actual structure of the XML and that's particularly what I wanted to talk to you about now and we're going to now go on and look at um, doing X, XSLT on files like this but I thought this was a useful visualization to start